I know for the 75 hard stuff, I have not been able to upload daily like I said I would. Excuses is that I've been going through like just so many transitionary periods the last like four weeks. It's been so hard to upload daily between all the traveling I've been doing and the issue is because I record in 4K and I record so much, uploading the files to my editor in time for him to edit the video and turn it around within hours to get it up daily has been like nearly impossible. Um, so now that I'm finally set, and then I ended up moving, which I didn't think I was gonna do. So now that I'm settled in, I'm like good to go. Everything's moved in. I'm still waiting. They were supposed to bring the furniture the other day and they didn't. So I have to wait still for that. And that'll be over there. But for the most part, we're good. We have the Wi-Fi now, like we're settled in. We got the gym memberships. So like there shouldn't be any more hiccups but i've obviously been uploading way more frequently than i ever have in my entire career on social media which i think still is good although it's not daily for the most part we've been doing trying to do every day uh, but i know the last like honestly mainly the last two and a half three weeks it's been hard to get daily daily just because every single place i go every hotel every everything the internet is just ass literally 10 upload speed bro and i have these fat 4k video files it literally will say Upload time, two days. I'm like, bro, come on now. And then I have to like simultaneously record while things are uploading. It's just whatever. But that's my excuse. If, I don't know if y'all understand that or not, but about to go train again. But I'm gonna start doing morning fasted workouts just so I, I'm trying to get in a routine here now that I'm settled in Charlotte. Ideally, wake up, love the natural lighting here. I get up pretty early. I get up around like 8 to 9 a.m. because of this, the natural light kind of wakes me up regardless of what time I go to bed, which is kind of nice. And then if I feel like I need to take a nap, I will. Wake up, take my uh greens the rise greens are fire by the way just tried them um energy drink or coffee go straight to the gym hydration drink that helps me a lot with not getting like lightheaded go straight to the gym fasted train uh come home eat shower get ready for the remainder of the day work on whatever things i'm trying to work on um so yeah so that's the routine i'm trying to get into i really want to start recording more of the podcast stuff on the christian um page because i feel like there's a lot of potential for that and it's just more fun and enjoyable what else? Uh, the gym update. So, I, I, you guys saw I went to Dallas and had really good conversations with Nabil and his business partner um, on how we could kind of do something here in Charlotte. Now, if I end up, I gotta pray about it and really think about it because if I really end up going this route, like it is, uh, it, it's gonna be, it's a big financial. I wouldn't even call it a risk because I'm so confident that it'll perform well, but it will be a big financial investment on my end, which is the main part I'm going to have to pray about and everything. But I am very confident that with them and how they run things that it would be a really phenomenal, crazy gym that like the East Coast has not really seen yet. So yeah, I'm going to pray more about that and hopefully that comes into fruition. That's a word, I don't know if that's a word or not. But we're doing more one-on-one, so I ha I'm opening a one-on-one -on -one program thing, like a more intimate inner circle group, uh, like for personal training, like physique training, spiritual training, like literally everything, my body, spirit, all that. I'm trying to start really working on people, working with people on a more intimate level, because I feel like that to me is just more fulfilling when I can see someone's life being directly changed, rather than like the comments that it, which the comments are cool, I'm not saying that's bad, but I'm trying to work with people more one-on-one -on -one coming up. So I have that, if you want to be interested in that, the link should be in the, down in the description. All right, I'm gonna go train though. <laughs> All 
I've yapped about this plenty of times, this whole entire concept. Fulfillment. When I was in high school, what I thought was gonna be fulfilling was just making the most amount of money, basically. Being able to buy whatever I want, whenever I want. Back then, I, I never really had a stage where I was like really a crash out, like a goober doing this, like going out. Never had like a hookup phase, none of that, like drinking phase. I never had that, but I'm sure a lot of y'all do have that. When you think of the ideal life, depending on where you are with your walk with Christ, you think of like hooking up with whatever chick you want, having all the money you want, yachts, cars, penthouse, like all that stuff. And that's like what you're, what you think is, is fulfillment, is fulfilling. Finish the journey, you won the game of life when you get to that point. But that is, that, that is temporary worldly fulfillment. I was reading the Bible yesterday, went to a coffee shop. One of the verses I flipped to was the woman at the well. The Samaritan woman at the well. I hope I'm getting my Bible logic right. The Samaritans uh, did not like the Jews, and the Jews usually would never like the Samaritans and help them or anything. So Jesus going to the Samaritan woman at the well was like kind of odd because like they usually don't do that. And basically, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. You have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself? as did also his sons and his livestock. Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, go call your husband, come back. Then this is like a whole different thing. But the main concept is the well, right? The water in life that we live, when we try to, try to get fulfillment, we think that once I get this amount of money in my bank account, once I get this job, once I get my my wife, once I get kid, like, then I'll do this, or then I'll do that, or then I'll be fulfilled, then I'll have fulfillment in life, then I'll feel like I'm successful, then I'll feel like I'm happy, then I'll feel like I have joy once I get to this point. And then once you get to that amount of money in your bank, you're like, oh, uh, okay, that's cool. Let me get to this point now, at this point. You get the, the Honda Accord, right? Now you're like, oh, Loki, I'm guilty of this. Honda Accord, now you're like, okay, now I want a, M3, now I want a Huracan, now I want a GT3 RS, right? It's like, which I'm guilty of, I'm not gonna lie. but I have a passion for cars, it's a little bit different. I don't do it just to flex or anything. It's it's that for everything. The Black Ops 2 analogy, once I get to Master Prestige, I'll be happy. Once I get Diamond Subs, I'll be happy. Once I get Diamond ARs, di like once I get all the cam camos, I'll be happy. It's a constant thing where we drink from it and then we're thirsty again. We keep getting thirsty and we want more because it's not fulfilling us, right? But Jesus says, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. In fact, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. When you when you drink the water from the Lord, meaning you, you spend time in his presence, this is what it means. It's that, it's that you're finding your fulfillment through Jesus and not through worldly things. You don't become, you don't keep coming thirsty. You're not left unsatisfied, unfulfilled. You're not left thirsty wanting to go seek for more validation, to seek for more money, to seek for more materialistic things. You're you're fulfilled and in that, that fulfillment overflows out of you into other people's lives. So it becomes more or less about yourself and more about others. And this is so true because, and another thing too, I'm gonna say that when you, when you chase God more and you seek him more, those things that you tend to chase after will naturally in a way come to you. I've found a lot more opportunities and success in life, um, even for those materialistic things, whatever, you know, that doesn't matter. <clears throat> when I am pointing towards God more as my North Star rather than doing things in my own way. The gym opportunity that's coming in my way. To me, that's all God. That's all God. Because the way it just played out is insane, right? Like it's just, and God has brought that opportunity to me. Versus if I feel like if I was chasing that on my own, it wouldn't go the way that it's going now. Drink from the well that never runs dry. The well, Jesus, drink from the water that Jesus can offer you. You will not become thirsty, bro. You, you will not keep going back to the same spot, trying to get more and more and more, thinking it's gonna fulfill you and fulfill your thirst. He will satisfy you, he will fulfill you in ways that you never have imagined. I can say this, bro, because again, I can speak on this because I'm sure you guys know, I'm in a pretty good position in life as a 23 year old and I've been, God has blessed me a lot and I have a lot for my age. And I can tell you that still the most satisfying thing that I cling to, that I love over anything that I've been blessed with is God, bro, everything. 
everything to God. If I had to choose anything to keep in life, it would be God overall because he fulfills me more than all these other things can fulfill me that I've had, that I've dabbled with, that I've, bro, I'm telling you. And I can say this because I've had it. See, I'm trying to say this in a way where I'm not like, I'm being, I'm, try, I'm humble, okay? I'm trying to speak humbly with this. I'm not trying to like make myself sound like I'm dope or not because I'm not. I'm literally worth nothing. I'm nothing. But that's what I'm saying that I have the ability to speak on this in a different way because I, I have, in a point, had literally everything at my front door as a young man, right? I had every opportunity to do anything that I wanted to do in this world, and I still choose God. And that is the best decision. Because I know that it fulfills me more. And all these other things might be cool for a moment, might give me temporary happiness, temporary fulfillment, but it's fleeting. And I'm thirsty again, every time I'm thirsty again. If anything, I'm more thirsty after. And it's this endless cycle of just unfulfillment and it, it can lead depression to anxiety to all these things. But when you drink from the water that Jesus gives you, you don't become thirsty anymore. You are fulfilled. You understand what truly matters in this life, what truly gives you fulfillment, joy, peace, and happiness. And it's like a drug almost. You just chase it and it's just so awesome. And so I hope you guys can experience that. All right. I gotta go train now. I'm low key yapping. But love y'all. God bless. Code Alex, Young LA, and Rise Supplements if y'all wanna support me in any way. Um, yeah. Love y'all. Till next time. Peace out.